a one of a kind eco and health retreat replete with its very own energy supply and organic farm our native village invites you to lap it up in the heart of sustainability this is a treat just an hour and a half from central bangalore meet ram kumar the founder and creator of this little beautiful world it all started more than 20 22 years ago uh, when we acquired the piece of land to heal my father-in-law. Uh, he was a shippy and he had gone through an open heart surgery. We didn't want him to go back to sea. So he said he'll become a farmer. So we acquired that piece of land to heal him. And down the road, he lost his kidneys because he was a long-term diabetic. So, you know, we had to stop farming and uh, friends of ours owned the adjacent piece of land and we were doing the whole thing together. They built their house there, a beautiful four-bedroom farmhouse. We were going to build our house here and live happily ever after. That was a script that we had written. But the script didn't quite play out that way. And we stopped farming and friends of ours, they were Australians, they wanted to go back. So we acquired that piece of land. So one day my wife and I realized that we were proud owners of 12 acres of land, a beautiful farmhouse and up to our eyeballs in debt. We'd been living outside the country for 17 years. Our heart was always in India. And we always wanted a little village pub, a little village inn, you know, when we retire, kind of a romantic, you know, on the farm kind of an idea. The original idea was six little tents behind our farmhouse. That's how the originally, you know, the whole thing started. And uh, one thing led to another, led to another, and it's a, it's a, it's a 22 room retreat that you see now. But there were some very, very clear uh, base level principles that we were not going to compromise on. Uh, one of it was in, in, in terms of sustainability. Yes, uh, I, I mean, I've been to the retreat, so I know that you've got your own windmill and uh, yeah. you generate, a, I think, about 70% of the energy that you consume. That's right. And almost all, you know, the food that you consume on the retreat as well is produced, you know, on your own farm, yeah, which is beautiful. Right. And it's all organic. Yes. I dreamed up of a, of a model where man is self-sustaining, where we didn't have to depend on anybody for the, you know, for our subsistence. Um, so... That's how, you know, the dream started and that's how we went about it. And uh, our native village is the first manifestation of that dream of self-sustainability. Ram, could you please describe, you know, the concept, the idea of our native village? Our native village is all about trying to bring back that concept of sustainability. So at, at a gross level, at an environmental level to say that, you know, we can live in a self-sustaining manner. So I'm not going to go to the extent of, you know, the, the Gandhian principles of frugality and, you know, sitting on the floor and eating only nuts and no, that's not the extreme I'm going to. Within the creature comforts that we're all used to in life, mm -hmm. can you have a, a, a living structure which is fully sustainable? So there are, there are two aspects to our native village. We describe ourselves as an eco retreat for holistic health. All our electricity, 70% we generate ourselves using, you know, uh, windmills, solar panels, biogas plants. So we generate gas using our own waste. We use the gas for cooking. We also use that gas as fuel to run a generator to produce electricity. So that's a pretty advanced thing. Most of our water is rainwater. We have a huge 84,000 litre underground tank into which we store all our rainwater that falls all over. Uh, zero waste attitude. There's nothing like waste where we come from. We always tell school children when they come from, tell me what's waste in your world and I'll tell you how it's not waste in my world. And then we have a swimming pool, which is a fully natural swimming pool, you know, where we use aquatic plants to clean the water, uh, not a drop of any chemical. Again, that's a, a, a design, strange as it may seem. You know, you find those ponds all over India, in rural India. But I had to go to Austria and bring the, the, the design model from there, the technology from there. So it's the first time this technology has come into India. The first time it's gone outside Europe, actually. For example, in my kitchen, we don't use any detergents at all. Because the kitchen water, I use to water my plants. Mm -hmm. So if I use detergents, I can't use it. I'll kill my plants. So I only use ash, wood ash, and shikakai to wash all our vessels. I, and the food, of course, because we have an organic farm. You know, most of our food is, you know, from, from the farm. It is food that is free of all animal proteins. We don't use any animal proteins because of its curative aspects as far as human being is concerned. Uh, only organic food, only whole food. So we don't use any refined products. So we don't use white sugar, we don't use white rice. 
uh, we don't use maida, we don't use milk, of course. So no refined products, only whole food. And it is food, as we say, of course, it is zero oil cooking. We don't use a drop of oil because added oils, again, are a new syndrome. You know, in India itself, we've experienced that only for the, what, 60, 70 years. Before that, it never happened. But last but not the least, it's food cooked with a lot of love. I say that because, you know, there are a lot of people who say, you know, my mother makes a dal, I've tried to make it, I follow the exact recipe and just doesn't come out. I don't know why. Because we are not able to see the love she puts in, which really is energy that we put into food, a, come, a time will come when we will be able to measure that. Because we are not able to measure that, we kind of dismiss it. But that's a huge factor and we take that pretty seriously. From a holistic health perspective, going by the principle of, you know, we are capable of healing ourselves and India being an affluent country now, you know, 7%, uh, 8% growth, we've realized that the growth of affluence of a nation or a country or an individual at a macro and a micro level directly related to, to the level of stress and lifestyle related lifestyle conditions, related yes. Diseases. So because of that, we've, we're focusing only on non-communicable diseases. We have a program where we have a cardiac rehabilitation program. People have gone through an open heart surgery or just about to go through it. Uh, they come for a rehabilitation program with us, a 21 day program. We do a preventive heart disease program, it's a 10 day program. We do a preventive diabetics program, education program for three days. So all these programs are meant to get you onto a different lifestyle pattern. So sometimes we describe ourselves as a lifestyle education center. So you can see so from, a, from a world level, environmental level to the human level, uh, we've created the platform for sustainability so that people can come see it and say, oh wow, this is also possible, is it? Open the mind to a whole world of possibility which we've shut down because of advancement. And, and not just see it. I think uh, once you it. go in there, absolutely. I mean, I, I stayed a night, uh, I stayed a day and a night. Um, so I've had, I've consumed the oil-free food, yeah. you know, um, and the products were all, uh, the food was organic. Uh, it was made right in front of me at in your kitchen. And I've uh, had your, you know, fresh from the garden hibiscus tea, oh, which yes. I completely <laughs> relished. Um, so I think um, it really does sort of open your eyes up. It does also indicate to you, hey, that once it's done, once the hard work is done, it's actually quite simple to live in that fashion. It is not, Absolutely. you know, high effort. A lot of people come and say, my God, this is complicated stuff. You know, they see all the solar panels, the windmills, my natural swimming pool. And they say, this is real high tech. And I always laugh when they say that because it's exactly the opposite. It is really low tech. While it was hard work, and sometimes when I think back, I say, oh my God, how did I do it? But while it is hard work, all I want to say is, it is not all that difficult. And I always tell people, if I can do it, and I'm not an engineer, and I'm not experienced and all that, anybody should be able to do it. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's been very good. Yeah, it's been rewarding, it's been satisfying, yeah. Ram, it's been wonderful talking to you and discovering our native village. There's every reason every one of us should do that hour and a half drive and check out this beautiful retreat. Um, I wish all of us could live like this, you know. Perhaps one day, when all the warning signs are, you know, right in front of our faces and we can't avoid them anymore, maybe all of us will make that choice. Until then, take the break, visit the retreat, and leave us your comments on what you thought about it. Thank you for joining us on Shai with Lakshmi. And thank you too. Thank you.